Good morning, my creative friends. Welcome back to Painting in Your PJs with Minette. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. I am in my PJs at 7 a.m. Mountain Time here in gorgeous Loveland, Colorado. And this month we're focusing on botanicals here on the show. And if you're new to Painting in Your PJs, welcome. I'm excited to meet you please hit that subscribe button, click that little bell so you get notified when I go live. And if you love what I share with you today, I'd appreciate a like or two or three on the video as well to let people know that it is worthy of watching. And when I think about drawing mandalas, and I'll share just a quick flip through of, you know, what our journey has looked like so far. When I think about botanicals and why they matter so much to me because they represent my deep connection to nature, my love of going for walks, my um, opportunities to stop and look at things up close and personal. So there's a lot of reasons that I love drawing botanicals in addition to the fact that they're just beautiful. And I have a phone full, I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera here, and I have a phone full of flower photos of all kinds, some noisy brushes there. And I wanted to start to play with those and, and do something different. So we started off a couple of weeks ago with just some drawing practice. Good morning, Blanca, really looking at the different shapes of flowers. We did a couple of different sunflower paintings because I love sunflowers. This was really fun to do. I did a more simple folk art style flower painting and then had some fun with practicing drawing leaves, watercolor and gel pen on that painted leaf there. And then some brush practice. I think one of the things that's really I love about watercolor is how much we can do just with the brush. These are all begging me to come back with a black pen and add some some zentangle patterns. And then we also played with some oil pastels and really looking at what could we create with oil pastels and these were last week's and again just lots of different ways to approach working with botanicals and part of what I'm all about on painting in your PJs is really learning about your own voice your own creative style using art as process for personal growth and self-discovery so last Thursday, I came in and created these little stencil leaf designs. I hand drew the, the designs inspired by some photos of leaves that I had taken. And then I did some fussy cutting to cut those out. And then I used the masks. And I actually love that I have the stencil. So this week, I'll probably do something fun with that as well. But um, I used the, the mask to kind of draw this design and pattern. I added uh, some orbs, the Zentangle pattern tipple around the center. And I decided before I went any further with this that I wanted to add some color to the design. And I have been wanting to play with my Derwent ink tents. And I have both the pencils and the blocks. And I may use some of both because the, the colors are a little bit different in each of them. I think I have a little, maybe I'll just use the blocks because I have a little more variety in my greens. And if you're not familiar with Derwent ink tents, they're kind of like a watercolor pencil, but they are very intense pigment. Uh, you can activate them with water. You can activate them with matte medium, which creates a really cool effect. But I love playing with them. And I sent out an email to my email list on Monday about how to turn any creative session into a mindfulness session. And I thought I would share a little bit about that as morning. Many of you know that I love anything related to mandalas or what in our community we call sacred circles. So I'm going to simply start 
by lighting a candle this morning set that aside here just you know bring that little mindfulness it's amazing how something as simple as lighting a candle can really just shift the moment i have my coffee i have my journal i have this beautiful candle i have my lovely art supplies so these are definitely one of those supplies that is on the pricey side but is worth the investment and will last a really long time. It doesn't take a lot of pigment. So I'm celebrating and honoring my supplies. I often like to take a minute to just take a couple of deep breaths. Just allow myself to relax, to settle in. Such a beautiful way to start the morning and to approach my practice slowly, not as if I'm in a race to get somewhere, but as if I have plenty of time, there's no need to finish anything here, that everything is working out exactly as it needs to. And I think the more that we can use our own creative practice as a mindfulness tool, as a spiritual tool, as a tool for just navigating presence. The more we enjoy the process and the slower we go, the better that we get. So one of the things over the last decade or so of spending more and more time making art, the more I've started to notice that practice is essential to success. And yet oftentimes we wanna make beautiful art right out the gate. We wanna take that class. We wanna you know, learn how to do the thing and you know, make something that looks like the instructors. And the truth is, is that anything that is worth doing deserves practice. It deserves time and attention. And as adults, we have such high expectations of ourselves. So I want to invite you as you listen in or approach the page this morning, that you slow down, that you be thoughtful, that you be intentional, almost like the meta prayer and may you be kind to yourself. And send that kindness out in the world to others as well. And so with the ink tent sticks here, you notice that I'm wetting my brush and I'm just brushing it over the top of the stick. That is one way to use these sticks. I love this set. It actually has spaces for mixing color. And the process that I'm doing today could be done with watercolors, watercolor pencils, watercolor crayons. I love Carn de Ash also, or the Cray Paw. And I'm just taking my time and I just want to get the color down on the page because then I can come back and have fun adding patterns, which is often my favorite part. So I'm not being super, super particular about the colors. I just want to show some of the, the variations in the colors. But you can see how, <coughs> excuse me, these vibrant these colors are. And I can go back and look also at my photos of my leaves. No, that's something else. If I still have them sitting here, I must. I do. And I can see some of the, the variations in, in the, the colors from the 
brighter greens to the deeper green and this one is really a very sort of gray green so I want to try to capture maybe a little bit of that silvery gray green and some of the asters that I saw were white and some were lavender so again I'm not trying to be overly realistic about this but I can be thoughtful about it so I might actually come in with a little this purple here and it might just turn brown and that's okay but just add maybe a little more color over the top and these are so interesting they almost end up having a very very chalky texture to them and you can layer them because they are watercolor they will reactivate just like watercolors do whenever you add more water to them I'm thinking I just want a little more color in that center there. Might even come back in with some white over the top of that, but I'm going to let that get nice and dry first. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Good morning, Yvonne. Welcome, welcome. I've got both my early birds here this morning, my West Coast lovelies. <clears throat> Okay, that yellow is not coming out very yellow. So I think I need to let my center dry there. And I want to play with seeing what can I do to kind of get a little sort of silvery green, a little different green going here. And that one ends up looking a little gray and our it's actually a little on the blue side. So I'm mixing this just like I would, of course everything has cat hair in it, mixing it just like I would a watercolor. And I'm being a little messy with that, right? I'm not, uh, I'm okay if I go outside the lines, but I'm just going slow again just like I would if this were a morning Zentangle practice. I'm being very mindful of my breath. Just remembering to just slow down. Start my day from this place of quiet. Often I'm in solitude down here in my studio. Well, if you can call two annoying cats being in solitude. And I'm not uh, loving the, the colors on here. So um, I'm sorry that I went in and put those colors over the, the top. So once it's dry, I'll figure out how I can fix that, fix that up. And I'm also wanting to maybe shift the, the color of those aspens and warm them up just a little bit. So just realizing you don't have to love everything that you create. You're not going to love everything that you create and just being okay with it. And remember the brushes matter, so making sure that you have a nice variety of sizes of brushes. I am loving the design of this mandala design with the hand cut leaf stencils and this is one of those projects where ooh, I could get caught up and do a whole series of these. <clears throat> Sorry I'm froggy this morning it's still early my voice is warming up. I'm 
No, they're not um, soft pastels, Yvonne. They're Derwent ink tents. And they are kind of like a uh, really intense watercolor pencil. They do end up feeling a little bit chalky in the stick form. I have both the, the sticks and the pencils, and they're one of my most favorite tools to, to play with. <clears throat> they actually can be used on fabric as well. You can color fabric and then heat set them with just a, you know, a cool iron. And then they're washable and everything, so they're great for working on fabric. But I love how vibrant they are. And I do have... Um, an artist friend that does wet her pas her soft pastels and use them this way. And it's one of the things I've been wanting to practice. So maybe one of these mornings I'll get my um, pastels out and play with them. <clears throat> I used to do a lot of art with pastel and I really admire pastel artists. But then when the kids were young, it was one of those messy... supplies that didn't go well with kids and the and the chalk is uh, can be the pigments can be toxic these days you can get all kinds of wonderful non-toxic things but I could easily so these sticks can be used a couple of different ways so I can also pick them up and color with them this way and then come back with the water and blend them in it just gives a little bit of different texture you can also just dip them right into the water and you get a really vibrant pigment when you do it that way so there's um, a lot of different ways to play with these but mostly I just love the the vibrancy of the pigments and the versatility of the tool <clears throat> and I particularly love the, the pencils for Zentangle art because they go over the top of the nice micron pens. So I love coloring my Zentangle patterns and designs with them. And in this case, I am putting the color down first and we're going to draw over the top and we'll see how that goes. I might need to seal the, the whole thing with some matte medium first. And as I mentioned, the, the Derwents are a little bit of a pricier tool. Or supply but they do last for a really long time. So you can see whether I dipped it in water, whether I colored with it and then added water or put my brush over the top, I still got that kind of nice, even green color here. Taking my time. I really love flat brushes like this one for working in detailed areas and helping me get into the tip of things. I know some people really love their round brushes, but my preferred brush is often a straight flat brush. And just like I would if I were drawing, I'm turning that page to give myself easier access to the different areas. And again, my intention this morning is to just slow down, coming off a very busy weekend, pretty busy week this week, and then I head out of town for almost 10 days so there will be no 
new videos next week. because I will be attending an art retreat and visiting my dad in Texas, outside of San Antonio, Texas. And so I can't tell you how excited I am to be attending a retreat. I am teaching one segment of the, the retreat for a couple of hours, but mostly I'm just excited to be there as a student and come back rested and inspired. And when I come back, it's going to be a new month as well. Kind of crazy how fast this month is gone. It makes me realize that I could have done, you know, a whole year of botanical things and probably didn't make as much progress as I wanted with some of the floral patterns and designs but kind of like with the faces I'll just keep practicing on my own I'm continuing to work on my oracle deck in the background as well now I'm liking it better now that I have more greens down I'm still not loving this so I think I'm actually going to come in with some uh either a white Posca, although they're all on the other table, um, or try a white paint marker and see if we can get some color over that center. It's too small. Somebody gave me this uh, Sharpie paint pen and I haven't tried a, a Sharpie paint pen so I think maybe we'll try that after I finish this next round of leaves and I also think I'm wanting to maybe add yellow to the center but then I'm thinking I want the background to be colored as well and have the the background be a beautiful blue but we have one more leaf shape to fill. So let's try, hmm, let's see. And I took a minute at the beginning of the video to light a candle to just catch my breath. I was down here working on my faces for an hour before I joined you guys and chatting with a friend in Texas that I'm very excited to see. And of course, I'm letting my coffee get cold. So these are very different colors of green. <clears throat> this is a very yellow green. This is a very blue green. This one's also blue, but a darker shade. So I'm just sort of noticing and thinking about they don't necessarily all go together in a way that I normally would be mindful of my palette but I'm having fun just it's a great way to kind of swatch out these colors and see what they do and kind of just play with them and by the time pattern or to the the leaf designs really dark green those patterns might have to be in white not in black which will be interesting
and we're going to do some fun botanical zentangle patterns. I think I want to share that. All right, so we have some interesting greens in here. And I'm using a very inexpensive little brush. And what's kind of interesting about this brush is it's leaving, you know, a little bit of streaky bits. But I'm almost wanting to see if I can come in and blend these up a little bit more. I This paper, it's inexpensive paper, so I'm being mindful of the the paper, the, the water does go through to the other side where I had a lot of water. So I want to kind of be mindful of not getting my page over wet. All right, let's see what this Sharpie marker does. I'm going to move my candle out of the way. It's amazing how a, a simple ritual like lighting a candle and this is a new pen, so it might take me a minute to activate, can just create a mindful moment and just help me to really be here present in the now. All right, this is an old pen, so let's see. Let's try this. A friend of mine sent me a whole box of different, oops, I don't like that one at all. So what happened there was it just gave me a big blat of color, but I can probably paint with it, but I certainly, and it's pretty transparent too. Well, let's see what we can do with this. And all I want to do is just uh, be able to brighten up the the center again and let those colors kind of stay underneath I will come back with my black and bring that more vibrant color back in Trying to keep the color in there and not totally flub it up. And this is just like when I was painting faces, right? We can, you know, everything's paint overable, even with water-based tools like this one. All right, and let's get a nice yellow. And I love combining materials as well as well. So I want a nice vibrant yellow in the center. I'm going to come in with this and I can see where I missed a couple of stems in here. So this is a Posca acrylic paint marker. And I just want to get some color going without painting over the whole section. a very very bright yellow. Definitely going to have to work on fixing up that center there, which is fine. I'll get it to a place I like it by the time I come now back in with the black lines again. It'll fix it right up. All right, we'll let that get good and dry. I can see where, oops, that white paint is spreading all over my surface. Clean that up a little bit. Mm, don't like those and they smell like, uh, they smell very alcoholy too. It says they're quick dry, permanent opaque, 
but didn't love those. I know some people really love those, but maybe I just haven't figured out how to use it yet. But I see where I have forgotten to paint in the, the stems in my center there. So I'm going to come back with my tiny brush. And working in these small detailed area, always just that lovely, lovely invitation to slow down a minute, catch your breath. Super full day today. I teach all the way until six o'clock tonight. So it's going to be a busy, busy day. So the more I can spend some time, what is up with that yellow? The more I can spend some time in this mindful space in the morning, the more energy I have and the easier it is to get through that day. All right, so here's what the, the pencils look like. I've had these for years. You can tell what my favorite colors are. And again, these last forever. But I just want to come in where I've missed some of the, where that Posca wasn't fine tip enough and color over some of the, the white and get a little more coverage in my center here. Also, maybe wanting to just green these up just a little bit. They're pretty yellow. When I think about the aspen leaf, the aspen, I have beautiful, I have my own little tiny grove of aspens. They're very young and slender trunks. And did you know that groups of aspens are all one tree? I did not know that. My daughter told that and told me that. Um, so, but they are. A little bit darker green than what I've got going on here. So let's just see if we can come in and layer that up a little bit. Hmm, shifted a little bit. And I'm probably going to want to use the Pencils also to come in and start adding some of that blue here. And I can use these like a colored pencil. I don't have to activate them with water, right? I can absolutely just use them as they are and they're very beautiful. And I can activate them with water and see how that color changes as well. But in these close up places where I don't want my colors to blend together, I'm probably not going to activate them with water, but I will out towards the edges. That's getting nice and dry. I'll be able to go back over that with pen. So I love how the colors are finally starting to come together. There's something about adding the blue around the edges that definitely help to define this uh, a little bit differently. And what I'm noticing is that, you know, this one is really gray here and I'm wondering if I want to, you know, even brighten this one up a bit so it won't be as true to that original plant, but it's going to feel like it's going to fit in better with my design overall, but I still have those silvery colors underneath.
And so just like if I were working with other colored pencils or watercolors, we have the opportunity to reactivate these with water, to layer with traditional colored pencils so they be can become a really nice addition to your supply kit. And they're, because they're a little more on the pricey side, right? You can either treat yourself and you don't need a large set of them. Um, you know, a set of 12 is plenty to play with. I don't know if they have a set of eight, but I believe they have a set of 12 to see if you like them, if you're someone who is a collector, or if you go to a local art store, not not like a Michaels or Joann's, but a Jerry's or a Dick Blick, they will often sell these in single pencils and you can uh, just, you know, buy a couple of colors or a couple of the sticks and see if you like them before you commit. Okay, that's feeling better already, loving that those colors are starting to feel like they're blending a little bit. This one is still very dark relative to the other ones, and so it just makes me curious if, um, so I'm not sure, that one's pretty blue. So again, like remember to test things ahead of time. So that's a more more blue than green on that page. And that's not going to do anything there. And what if we just added a little bit of white to sort of brighten that up? I'm noticing the center of this leaf is pretty wet and I'm being mindful not to tear my paper. And I wanted to pull my Derwins out and get them activated and play with them this morning because we have a Sacred Circles live call this morning. And you can find out more about our Sacred Circles membership at minette.teachable.com, which is linked on my channel. For just $10 a month, you get three live calls for mindful connection and creative art making. All right, let's come in and just soften these blues up a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I want to draw next or if I want to tangle next and I'm thinking I want to get the whole thing painted let it dry really well and then I would come back on Thursday morning with some add some Zen tangle patterns to these and some texture and design and I want to test maybe some of these different blues. I wanted a little more turquoisey blue, but there's not one in here that's kind of a more turquoisey blue. It's a really dark blue. Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm just testing those different blues over here and there's not a lot of variation in them. All right, let's get a little bit bigger brush. And I think I want to come in maybe with some of this darker blue in the up close to my leaves. And then I can brighten it as I go out. And remember that these act like watercolor. That brush is too big. These act like watercolor is that um, to lighten the pigment, all I need to do is add more water, not necessarily to change the color. All 
The one thing about the Derwents is you can get some hard transitions, especially, you know, here where it's drying really fast. So you have to work a little bit with that pigment to kind of soften some of those transitions. And because I'm not working on watercolor paper, I'm just simply in some A simple sketchbook, which is great. Okay, I really love that deep dark blue on there. So that definitely is great. So I'm going to get this all painted up. And then on Thursday, I'm going to come back and add the Zentangle patterns because I have another plan for painting in your PJs live tomorrow night. Okay, that one's too raggedy. Let's see. I bought a very inexpensive set of paintbrushes at Michael's to kind of just play with and try. And they've been okay. They definitely shed their bristles. They're not, they're not the best brushes. Let's get in here with, I think that little round brush is going to be good. When you start to come around the, the edges, I notice, you know, where I can see where I've missed spots. Get that book nice and flat in there. Yeah, and because the, the page is absorbing so much water, this definitely feels like it needs time to dry. And giving myself permission to just take as long as it takes to finish this design that there's, you know, I don't need to finish this in one or even two settings. Letting all of these layers of ink and color and marks just take their own time. And I love a good finished project, so I'm always committed to completing things and I have to learn not to rush, that I definitely sometimes get into that mode where, oh, I just want to finish that one and move on. And I love how this detail work, it makes me slow down, right? You notice I get quiet. The, the more detail work there is, the quieter that I get. And you can see the, the background is pretty sketchy there, but that's okay. I don't mind that look, right? It's not like super, super smooth. But I'll let it dry and I can decide if I want another layer. And once it's super dry, I may also decide before I add pen that I want to add matte medium. I need to just try my nice micron drawing pens over the top and make sure that they will go on nicely. Get myself zoomed in so much I keep going off the screen. So I'm just adding all the color. I'm not loving this yellow in the center. It feels too different than the, the rest of the drawing. So I'm going to go in with uh, some green over the top of that yellow and just green it up a little bit. And I think that's going to make me happy. And again, just being mindful, taking my time, pausing to look at the colors, pausing to always notice what do I like, what do I not like.
And if I was at a point where I'm like, I really don't like this and I don't like where it's going at all, I would just stop. I really did love this leaf design. I'm a little sorry. I forgot to take a picture of it just in the black and white, but I have the stencils and I can make another one because I feel like I could draw or paint this a lot of different ways. And the month of October is the month of Inktober. And there's, it's a, a month focused on drawing and pen and ink. And if you look on the internet anywhere or on Instagram and look for the hashtag Inktober, there are these great prompts. And then a number of years ago, someone in the Zentangle community started Inktober Tangles. So there is a month of Zentangle patterns shared. And I think that I want to participate in October. And so we're going to have a, a month of Zentangle patterns in October with the Inktober tingles, which I'm excited about. And while I'm traveling, I always love like I tingle on the airplane, so I'm probably going to print out the, the list of patterns and start playing with some patterns and ideas. Okay, I'm loving how the blue is kind of pulling it all together. And I'm definitely going to want a combination of black and white ink. And I'm looking at this going, I might even want to come in and add Posca markers. instead of microns or gel pens to get some more vibrant lines and marks. But we'll see on Thursday. And what I normally do is where I've got some of these just test marks over here is that I will come in and write over these with a couple of different types of pens or make some bigger swatches. In fact, I have a, a whole, this page in here would be a great page to just do some testing, some swatching and different pens over the, the top of the Derwent to see what I like best. So here we have some nice color down. So this is layer number two of this project. It definitely is going to need a layer number three. And I am looking for this. So I'm going to come back in right over the top and bring my flower back so I can see the center again. And I can make some different decisions about color or come back in with another layer of white to brighten that back up again. I'm having that moment of I should have left it green like that first layer and not messed with it. But I did mess with it and so now I just need to get it back to a place I like it. And actually just bringing the lines back brightens it up quite a bit. Nice lines back in the center. I might get a little bit more white out towards the, the edges of the petals, but leave the centers as they are. And again, that last step on color is that I want to green up the center here. Like it feels, I don't want to get rid of the yellow, but I want to soften and make that yellow just a little more green. So it feels like it kind of fits in with the rest of our design. And I'm some, there's some dirt went down on here, but there's also that yellow Posca. So it's going to be interesting to see if I come back with a little water, what's going to happen. Mixing that acrylic paint with the Derwent. I don't know. Everything is a big fat experiment these days. 
Like I don't know if it's going to stick. So it's dulling it just a little bit, which feels good. It's also making me realize this definitely needs to be a little more white. And I might want this even just a little darker shade of green. So you can also come in with a paintbrush right on the tips of those pencils and just pull that pigment right off the tips of those pencils which is great because I need to clean up some edges here. Again, I'm not going to get too caught up in details because by the time I come in and add patterns, things that I might be seeing in the moment as a imperfection or things that I want to judge, are all going to just get covered up anyway. Okay, the green is what it needed there in the center still see some of that vibrant yellow poking through but it feels a lot better now in the moment how's everybody else doing you guys have been quiet today what are you working on over there today and coming in with a, a white gel pen they can really get in there into those nooks and crannies with that white. Brighten up that center. So as always, thank you for coming and watching live. Thank you for watching the replay. I hope you enjoyed some mindful creative moments of your own today with your art or your writing. And that you remember to make any moment of creativity a mindful moment by simply slowing down, catching your breath, going slow. What does it look like when you slow down a little bit, when you approach the page from that much more mindful direction? So now I love the white because that means that I'm going to be able to come in and whatever patterns I decide to add on these outer edges are also going to be white. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but even just adding these white lines is going to start to bring all of this together nicely. So I can't wait to work on the next layer, <clears throat> but I am out of time for today. At the end of painting, do you have to fix for pigment to stay or is it just the finished result desired? You've been painting an octopus. Um, if you're painting with acrylic, no fixative or um, gloss or varnish or anything is needed. It's a personal choice about how the colors look. And if you like the, the colors, um, I love octopus are so much fun, octopi. And um, if it's watercolor, you can't seal it because almost any fixative I think would interact with the with the watercolors. So what are you using to paint it? If you're using acrylic, you do not need to seal it with anything. Acrylic lasts forever. So no no change needed there. And the the Derwents also, right? They're pretty heavily pigmented and fade proof, right? So you wouldn't need to. And again, watercolor I don't think, I've never looked to see if there is a watercolor to seal, but I think that um, if you're painting with acrylics, you're, you're fine. There's nothing that you need to do to, to seal it. All right, so this is that step where I want to just keep 
playing and I tend to get kind of fussy with it and have a lot of fun with it, but I'm pretty happy with, oops, it's going to zoom in this way. Happy with how the colors and the textures came out. It's, um, I'm happy with the variation in the colors and we'll see what happens when we add some pattern and line design to the piece and I will do that on Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Mountain. So I'll be back tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. Mountain or Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Mountain as always. Thank you for joining me live. Thank you for watching the replay. Please do hit that like button. Let every other people know that this was a video worth watching. Thanks my friends. Have a great rest of your day.